I was working on my analysis of every FNAF Plus video teaser, and that will be coming out tomorrow, so subscribe and hit the notification bell. Hopefully YouTube won't break, and you can check it out as soon as it comes out. But after I finished working on that video, I was able to put some pieces together that actually kind of blew me away. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that someone has thought of this before me, since this is, a very, this is obviously a very popular game, but whatever, I want to talk about it, because it, inter it interested me. I think that teasers number 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all from the perspective of the same person, and that they tell the story of who possessed none other than Foxy. This is the story of Foxy in Five Nights at Freddy's Plus. Let's start with teasers number 3 and 4. These seem to be from the perspective of a patron, not from anyone actually working at Freddy's. They're from the audience's perspective, and number 3 doesn't even really have a reason to exist, so I think it's safe to say that these are just recordings from a customer at Freddy Fazbear's. And the person that recorded these must have seen something afterwards, because they are the one that breaks into Freddy's in teaser number 6. I will be able to explain how I know that shortly. The person that breaks into Freddy's is a teenager. We know this because of the description of teaser number 6B. They want to investigate Freddy's because of the paranormal stories and make a video out of it. That's why it's being recorded. Teaser number 6 shows their investigation, and when they get to the security office, their investigation ends with a jump scare from Foxy. They run away in fear, and we see them run into the parts and service room. The teaser ends with a shot of the puppet right after a shot of Foxy. This individual was trying to hold the door shut behind them, but Foxy was able to get in. They got to the child, and the spirit of the puppet does what we know she loves to do. She stuffs the child into the Foxy suit to give it some sort of life. That's the only way I could possibly interpret this. They're hiding behind, we see Foxy through the door, he beats the door down and gets in, and then the shot ends with the puppet. That seems like en enough specific details to be able to put that piece together. But how do I know for sure they're stuffed in Foxy? Yes, that's the one that we saw at the end, but how do we know it's the child is in Foxy? Well, that answer comes from teaser number 5, the one we just skipped over. We see this entire teaser from the perspective of someone within Foxy's head. But actually going into the evidence, of course, there is the obvious part that Foxy is the one that jump scares the teaser 6's protagonist. Twice. It could have been anyone, but it was specifically Foxy. Going back to number 5, the thing that I really like about this teaser is how many images it flashes on screen. And since this happens while the protagonist is running towards the exit, it implies that these images are memories of theirs. And nearly every single one is something that lines up perfectly with this theory. It starts with the dining area, which is where the preparation for the investigation took place. Then it shows footage of both teasers number 3 and number 4. Now you know why I'm confident they're all from the same person. We see disturbing endoskeletons, which the protagonist of teaser number 6 would have seen. We see this screen, and okay, I won't lie, I still have no clue what this is, it's so blurry. We see a jar of eyes, which was in the, par the Parson service room. We see the door from the security office that Foxy poked his head through. We see the Celebrate poster from the same security office. Unfortunately, this next one doesn't help much because we have never seen this before, but the quantity is going to have to overpower this one. We see the puppet, which this person has very clearly seen. This image is also pretty disturbing, and it comes up more than once, and I think that might be because they don't know that the puppet was actually trying to do a good thing. Our protagonist here would have no reason to know that. And fast forwarding a little bit to top it all off, we see this missing person poster. This is one of very few screens that our protagonist didn't see, but it's specifically the last one that we see. That's because it was only put up after the events of teaser number 6. Teaser number 3 and number 4 are just some recordings that it could took while at Freddy's. Teaser number 6 is about the same kid breaking into Freddy's, uh, presumably because they saw something, but it could just be because they heard the stories. And teaser 5 takes place after 6 when the kid got stuffed. And as they run to the exit, their mind races thinking of everything they had seen on this journey. One more thing, in this scene from teaser number 6, an inaudible phone call is going on in the background. Reddit user Kiwi091238, shout out to them, was able to decode it. And it's about the new guidelines surrounding how people should act around F. Referring to this unidentified character as F obviously makes you think of Freddy, but no, it's about Foxy. Because they are now acting and going to act, unlike any other character. Now before we move on to the next segment, I do want to um, acknowledge something that uh, does poke a hole in this theory, and might actually just poke a hole in the story as a whole. Um, 
why did Foxy kill this kid if it wasn't already possessed? That is something I unfortunately can't answer, because I absolutely think that this individual from teaser number six was stuffed into Foxy. I think there's enough evidence to support that. But then the problem with that is that they are now the one that possesses Foxy, meaning Foxy wasn't possessed before, so why did this happen at all? That, again, I just can't really come up with an answer for, but I'm hoping it'll be explained, or, you know, maybe this theory is inaccurate, but I'm hoping to see the story develop, because I think there is just so much evidence pointing to our protagonist in the biggest teaser, possessing Foxy, and I would like to see that be elaborated a bit more. I doubt we'll get anything further on this character, but who knows what secrets and bits of lore the developer will implement into the final release. So again, just to sum this up and um, ask some questions that I know will be asked, um, and you know, the main one still is, why did Foxy kill? And even if my theory is incorrect, it's still an interesting question because the animatronics are always possessed by kids, that's always the story. And also the story has always been the animatronics don't attack kids, because they are victims and kids themselves, they don't want to hurt kids. You know, that was the story in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, and I think it was mentioned in 1, but it was definitely mentioned in 2. You know, they quote-unquote just stare. They don't um, attack adults in front of adults, but they act very nice around the kids, but then with their adults around, they just stare. So Foxy attacking this kid, even if it's a somewhat older kid, still wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So. Maybe this means that the animatronics were bad all along, maybe that's the story of this, um, because again, keep in mind the developer of this game does have the right to alter the original story. This is not canon to Five Nights at Freddy's, so they can alter the original story if they so choose to. They've already somewhat done that by putting the puppet in the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 location, even if the puppet already existed at this point in the timeline, we never see them in the FNAF 1 location. So yeah, hopefully the story gets fleshed out some more, either through teasers before the game comes out, or when the game comes out. And there's also the question that, and it's the last one I'll touch on, why does this matter? How does, the, how does this affect the game in any way? Well, it likely will not have an effect on the protagonist of FNAF Plus, but the developer will clearly be telling a story through FNAF Plus, and it seems that Foxy and maybe even the puppet will be some of the most important parts. There is also the question of why didn't this person leave at the end of teaser number 5? Because um, you could see that they made it to the exit and the teaser ends there. Um, but you could honestly, you could, you could say that about all the animatronics from the official games as well. Uh, because, you know, they are in control of the suits, they could technically walk out if they if they wanted, um, but it's probably, you know, best to just not touch upon that, because, you know, they would end up being an animatronic walking around, and they're probably unable to speak, so, yeah. I'm just putting pieces together that make sense in my head, uh, feel free to critique this if you want, or, you know, just disagree with it, um, but all of this just seems too obvious to me. Like, in teaser number five, this person, unless they're connected to what we've seen before, doesn't have any reason to be emphasized, and again, a lot of the things that we see on screen in this teaser, we do not see until teaser number six, and the protagonist of teaser number six is how we see those things. And then teaser number six B, which was a very, which was a big secret at the time, at one point you needed to put together code to get the URL, um, you know, they talk about the person that broke in in teaser number six, that's the whole point of this. So they are very much putting focus on this character, and then teaser number five sort of just comes out of nowhere, it's not even really related to any of them, unless you put these pieces together. So, that's what I think. That is, that is, that is, that is what I think. I think that is the story of Foxy in FNAF Plus, and I really hope that more lore develops either before the game comes out or during the game. I'm very much looking forward to FNAF Plus. My full video on the FNAF Plus video teasers will be out tomorrow, like I said, so look out for that. It's probably going to be very fucking long, I haven't recorded it yet, but it's one of the longest scripts I've ever written. So, hopefully you guys enjoy it. That's all from me, thank you guys so much for watching, I'll see you guys next time.